here on set with me uh, is Congressman Peter Welch of Vermont. You are on this committee. Uh, so what do you plan to ask Mr. Gorsine? Well, there's really two fundamental questions. Number one, why did they have leverage that exceeded Lehman Brothers when it collapsed? I mean, that meant that he had no capacity. That company was uh, put at risk when they had such an extended position and the bet went wrong. Uh, number two, what happened to the customer money? And uh, Mr. Corzine, in his prepared testimony, his written testimony, says he doesn't know. So the question is, why doesn't he know? That's a very bright line. You do not use customer money. Uh, uh, for your own account, and uh, if he doesn't, if he didn't know what happened to that or why it was used, he should know. He's the head of the firm. Well, in those prepared remarks, you, you also hear the comment made, "Well, I'm no longer there. I resigned. I can't get a lot of the paperwork that would answer some of your questions." I mean, how are you going to pursue getting answers to these questions? He says he can't answer. Well, a lot of that's going to have to be uh, running the paper trail outside of the hearing. But if you're the head of a company and you're making the major decision, as he did strategically, about to bet on, uh, as he did on the, on the sovereign debt. Uh, and then number two, he decides to uh, highly leverage that bet. So he's the one that's making the decision strategically to put an enormous amount mm -hmm. uh, of money at risk and the future of his firm. And then three, you're in a position where when that starts going wrong and they get called on the margin calls and the customer money is being used, the person in charge of the firm is in charge of making sure that you do not cross that line. So this is a question, if he can't answer how it exactly happened, there's still accountability here for the head of the firm. What were the procedures in place to make certain that that would never, ever, ever happen? And whose responsibility is this ultimately? I mean, to what degree do you also think that the regulators are culpable? Well, you know, I think it's a ba bad rap to be talking about the regulators. It gets us off in the pucker brush here because this is something where there's got to be some firm accountability. It's like sort of blaming the police officer the day after your house is broken into that they weren't there to stop the, uh, uh, the, the thief when he came in. And I think it really gets us off in the wrong direction. And in fact, a lot of the people who are blaming the regulators are the folks who are trying to undercut funding for the CFTC. And in fact, uh, uh, Congresswoman DeLauro and Boswell and I have legislation that we've introduced uh, to, to provide SEC-style transaction-based funding uh, so that the CFT, uh, CFTC has the ability to do its regulatory job. Yeah, well, and some have even said that, that there's some sort of insurance for commodity accounts to, to make investors whole or to insure the money they invest. Are you supportive of that, of, of expanding the mandate of, say, CIPIC? Well, I'm not, I'm not so sure I am. I mean, some of this stuff is just criminal activity. Uh, uh, it may, and, and do, can you insure against that? Or when you cross this line on customer account, can you insure against that? <clears throat> if we had a fund that was, uh, so I don't know. I, I don't know whether that's the way we How should How many go. of your constituents ha have lost money with MFL? I don't know, but I've received calls from people who had customer account money and they don't know where it is and they don't know whether they'll get it back. That's pretty astonishing. I mean, it's almost the equivalent of you not being able to get your deposit at your local bank back. I mean, that's just a trust issue that is so essential that any financial firm honor that bright line rule mm -hmm. so that we can have confidence, investors can have confidence that their money's not going to be stolen when they turn it over. Yeah, you know, Wall Street watches this and says, oh gosh, it's going to get so politicized and it's going to lead to more regulation or it's going to have to change, uh, you know, the way of life for some of the innocent players out there. But even if, if you're not acting as an advocate for, for, say, Wall Street's point of view there, you could look at this and say, this is a very prominent Democrat a senator, a governor, then a CEO, who's sitting there. That's and right. he's getting uh, attacked from all sides, but certainly uh, from some Republicans who have said, you know, if you've, as an elected official, received money from MF Global or John Corzine, you need to return that money uh, to, and pay it out to the customers. What do you think of that, ideas like that? Well, I think that's getting into the political domain that's not going to help us. I mean, this is actually quite simple. It looks like it's tragic for the family, the people that lost money. But number one, uh, the firms have to have uh, the customer accounts that are segregated and mm -hmm. never invaded. And if they did that, uh, then there should be hell to pay, quite frankly. But with that, what about the, what about the CME and what about some of the bodies uh, on which these transactions were carried out? 
if, if then there's a question as to whether or not there can be regulatory steps that would be put in place to avoid this from happening. I mean, are there computer programs that show if money goes from an account that is customer segregated mm -hmm. and it's going into the firm and then being traded, is there a program that could alert the regulator or even alert, uh, alert uh, the, the the risk managers in that company that somebody's doing something they shouldn't be doing? Oh. I mean, this shouldn't get political, but it will, <laughs> like everything course. does. It says Washington. But bottom line, you know, we have to have a futures market that works. Right. And the, the thing that's so worrisome to, uh, like, Mr. Peterson and Mr. Lucas is they see that the futures market is something very important for middle America. It's not just a Wall Street uh, right. deal. And I think that the risk here was that you violated a major rule in investing by borrowing way more than you could sustain if you your bet went mm -hmm. wrong. And that's a, that appears to be the classic mistake that he made. And then secondly, he violated this inviolate, the company violated right. the inviolate rule about segregating customer money. Very quickly, um, would you be supportive of, of clawing back compensation to executives at MF Global to pay back? customers who lost their funds? I would. If they violated the customer segregation rule, mm -hmm. yeah, I think there should be accountability there. Okay. Congressman, thank you for making time. I know you have to get back to this yeah. committee. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Peter Welshauer of Vermont.